Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service and uh, time of communion, sharing with one another. There's children in the building. Hooray! Look at that, you get a cheer just for being under 50. So I should get a cheer every time I'm here. Yes. (laughs) And you, Jenny. Yes, and you. Uh, It's good to be able to gather together and worship God as a family. That's what we're here to do, isn't it? Um, Well, as we're talking about family business, we're going to begin now. We've got some bands of marriage. So, try and get these correct this week. I published the bands of marriage between Daniel Edward Middleton and Sophie Elizabeth Body, both of this parish. This is the first time of asking. And I also published the bands of marriage between William David Morris and Nicola Helen Robinson, both of this parish. This is the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these people may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Let's pray for these couples then. Oh God, we thank you for William and Nicola and Daniel and Sophie. We ask that you would be with them uh, in this time of preparation. Draw close to them, Lord. Pray for them on their marriage day and in their lives together. That you would bless them. Draw them closer to one another and to you, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God has been at work this week. God's always been at work every week. Uh, But I wanted us today to share in something in particular that's been happening because Andrea, you come on up now. And uh, she has a story for us about what God's been doing in her life this week. And I hope that this is a source of encouragement for us all. So I'm going to invite Andrea to come up now and share with us. I don't know whether any of you are uh, aware of the, the health issues I've, ha- I've had um, recently. It started off with a bout of diverticulitis and sepsis, so I was in hospital for a, for a week. Then when they discharged me, the surgeon said those wonderful words, we'll have you back for a colonoscopy. Oh dear. Anyway, the effects of that were very polite, but that's another story. At the end of that, he said those immortal words, we'll have you back in eight weeks for another colonoscopy, just so I can check. When I went back, different surgeon, it was a consultant surgeon, and you know he was busy taking out little bits and tattooing an area, and when he'd finished, he said, you've got bowel cancer. So immediately, on a rare occasion, I went straight to God. Sometimes I do forget, but I went straight to God, quietly, obviously, because you don't know who's uh, got faith and who hasn't. And I felt absolutely at peace. Um, I'd I'd had on my Bible app um, some plans and things, and one of the plans said, if you don't share it, nobody can pray. So I did. Bless you, Kaz, for sending out the the prayer and I told, you know, whoever and and whatever. And the power of that prayer was absolutely phenomenal. I just, I was so at peace. I didn't pray for healing. I just spoke to God and said, whatever your will is, that's fine. If I'm cured and I'm here, so be it. If I'm cured by... um, Surgery, which is what he told me I'd have to have, that's okay as well. And actually, if I'm not cured and I'm upstairs, then God bless it, I'll be with the Lord and it'll be fantastic. Win-win, whatever the situation. Never shed a tear. I was completely at peace of it. 
went to the, the hospital for the consultation to plan the surgery. I'd even planned it. I bought new nighties and a new bag and I was all ready for hospital. And I went in and this poor surgeon, he had a look on his face. Well, he, he just completely bemused because he went, it's gone. I'd been for a scan. There was no sign of it. The, the biopsies said it, it wasn't there. He'd seen it, he'd, I'd seen it, he'd marked it, but it was completely gone and I'm absolutely cancer free. And that is the power of God. And all of you wonderful people that prayed for me, the power in your prayer on my behalf was absolutely staggering. So I have to thank firstly God and then everybody else. So keep on praying for everybody or whoever you can, believe in that prayer because it works wonders. Let's worship this God, this God who is at work in this world that he loves. Let's worship him now. Faithful one, please would you stand and let's sing. I think just after Andrea's testimony, we should start with the chorus. Is that all right, Chris? Please do be seated as we 
come to our time of confession now. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace now and forever. Amen. And the collect. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Ruth is going to come and bring our first reading. The first reading this morning is from 1 Kings chapter 18. After a long time in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the land. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, troubler of Israel? I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. But you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed the Baals. Now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled them the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one of them for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response, no one answered. And they danced around the altar they made. At noon, Elijah began to talk them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he's deep in thought or busy or travelling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. 
So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until the blood flowed. Midday passed and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response, no one answered, no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. And they came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord which had been torn down. Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it, large enough to hold two seers of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it a third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, Let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me so that these people that know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones and the soil and also licked up the water in the trench. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Our gospel reading is taken from John chapter 11, verses 38 to the end. Please would you stand for the gospel reading. So then hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. And Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did put their faith in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here is this man performing many miraculous signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation, and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Therefore, Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the Jews. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the desert, to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing before the Passover. They kept looking for Jesus, and as they stood in the temple area, they asked one another, What do you think? Isn't he coming to the feast at all? But the chief priests and Pharisees had given orders that if anyone found out where Jesus was, 
he should report it so that they might arrest him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please do be seated and Jenny will come and share God's word with us now. Let us pray. Father God, may the words that I speak glorify your holy name. Amen. Well, uh, today we are continuing um, our way through Kings, uh, but first I'll reflect upon um, the intermission that Hazel spoke of last week. So let's hope all your ice cream wrappers are in your pockets, please, as we take that breath, that baited breath as we move on to um, read and, and open a word of Kings. So the theme of today is unchanging, always new. We see in this passage that God never changes. The goalposts remain firmly fixed in the ground. So as we've read, Elijah meets with Ahab Elijah has been perceived as one of the troublemakers or the troublemaker of Israel. Elijah explains to Hayab, it is not him, uh, but Hayab and his family that have turned their backs on God and instead chose to worship Baal. Elijah summons all those, as we've read, who follow his Baal to meet on Mount Carmel. If you think about it, there's nearly a thousand people gathered. A thousand people to one man, Elijah. Elijah sets the task for them to to bring two bulls, one for the people and one for him. And let us remember again, Elijah is facing nearly a thousand people, one man against a thousand. Seems a bit unbelievable, but we know, don't we, who is protecting our one man. So the prophets of Baal shout for hours as we've read with no response. Elijah starts to tease the prophets. Can you just imagine, come on, where's your God? Come on, where is he? It's a bit like when, you know, we all get together, don't we? Um, Group of ladies and the men are watching the football. There, you team's rubbish. Can you just imagine that scene and the frenzy with the the people start to slash themselves in? My gosh, as I was preparing this preach, I was just sat in the middle of that scene and it was uh, quite amusing in some parts and quite horrific in others. So... Elijah then starts to pray to God um, and he starts to, sorry, he doesn't start to pray to God, he starts to to build the altar. Um, As we've read, it's a lengthy process of preparing the 12 stones that represent each tribe of Israel um, and they were named Israel. The digging of the trench that hold 15 litres of of, of seal. Now, me being me, I had to look into uh, what the actual... um, unit was, and I've just given that away now, haven't I? The unit that says in the Bible of how much steel represents 15 litres in, in, in modern terms. So can you imagine everything, all these things in this altar? So how on earth was anything going to change with that, let alone the four jars of, of filled water? So here we've prepared the, the altar, and it's quite important that we know exactly everything that went into that, because how can that then suddenly disperse? So Elijah starts to pray, and as we read, God responds to Elijah's prayer by sending the fire which burnt the whole of the sacrifice. And it's important, as we've said again, to know exactly how much was burnt. This shows God's almighty power, strength, and the wonder to witness that scene. Again, threw me back right into the middle. What an amazing thing to happen after hours and hours and hours of those that worship Baal shouting out, Baal, Baal, show us, show us, reveal yourself. So it just goes to show that we have exactly one God and our God that never changes but is always making things new. So, as we've said, God never changes but opens our eyes to new ways and new life, as the prophets of Baal experienced. 
they too, if we read on a little bit more in the uh, scripture, they too have their hearts turned and they see we have one true God. So it's a lovely ending to that part of scripture if we read a little further on. And we all, as we know, we all have a path to follow. But within that path, there are choices, choices that we make as individuals. As Christians, we are served to call in specific areas and are blessed with different gifts and talents. Sometimes we may feel that we need a change in direction, feel spiritually challenged, annoyed or confused in situations, and we may become resistant to change or facing something new. Jeremiah, verse Chapter 32, verse 19 states, Great in counsel and mighty indeed, whose eyes are open to all the ways of the children of man, rewarding each one according to their ways and according to the fruits of their deeds. So thinking about decisions that we make and being resistant or can be resistant um, this helped me reflect upon our recent um, swearing in as church wardens, Charles, Brian, and a conversation that I actually had quite briefly with Charles after the, the service when I saw him in church the other week about resistant materials and relentless ifs. And I thought it was really important to bring that to um, the sermon today. So thinking about the resentless ifs, you know, God's response, if you do this, this will happen. This is quite relevant in our reading from 1 Kings today. Those that prayed, danced and chanted around the sacrifice made to Baal was met with nil response. God, through being God who never changes, opened the eyes of the people and they were made new. God, who is unchanging, makes things new. His unchanging ways led the people to new life as Elijah prayed in verse 37. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you are Lord, our God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Bishop Matthew also spoke of resistant materials, as I just sort of briefly mentioned. He reflected upon how woodwork metalwork and textiles at school is now known as resistant materials. In our faith journey, we may and will have become resistant to change, especially during the pandemic when our churches were closed, our worship lives certainly did change. The buildings closed, our method of worship became more remote. We weren't surrounded by our church family, and um, we weren't able to sing at first when our churches were, were open. Now our churches are reopened and we have to focus on what church is going to look like moving forward. And that is where we can and will become resistant to change. Certain change, but we have to realise that change does have to happen. To put this also in a biblical um, context, Bishop Matthew used the scripture from Jeremiah 18, 1 to 6, the potter and the clay. God never changes, but changes us, moulds us and shapes us in our discipleship. God is the potter and we are the clay. We who are wonderfully and beautifully transformed to reflect the image of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ as we follow in his footsteps. Thinking about resentless ifs made me reflect upon the book of Jonah. Although God had chosen Jonah to be the one to go to Nivea, Jonah thought he was better off going his own way, the other way. As we know, it certainly wasn't. God needed Jonah to be where he was chosen to be. So God was very passionate about the people of Nivea and didn't want Nivea destroyed. He didn't want to be the one to destroy Nivea. So Jonah had, no, had, had to literally be placed in the pits of despair in the heart of the, the whale for him then to reflect and to realise that his resentless if wasn't going to work. If he went that way, he was going the wrong way. 
So he then realised that God was moulding and shaping him for the job ahead in which he had been called to do. As we know, the world is ever-changing, and for us, over the past 18 months, our lives have changed. But however, in the midst of our uncertainties, our fears, our desperation, our lack of faith, or feelings of altered faith, within the darkness we have experienced, both personally and as a nation, we should always remember to hold on to the blessing that God has not and will not ever change. God, who ha God has remained the same and has been with us in every situation and experience that we have been exposed to. God remains our one true God who loves, protects and guides us in everything we do. So let us give thanks to God for the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ who breathed into us the Holy Spirit. Let us pray in our daily prayers the words of a very famous hymn, song, Spirit of the Living God. Let us pray, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on us. Help us to see the ways in which you call us to serve. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we just thank you that you work in our lives, all things together for good. And sometimes we can't see it. Sometimes we lose hope or faith. Sometimes the time of waiting seems too long. But Father God, some words that came to me this morning when I was thinking about the prayers was about steadfast faith. So Father, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit falling afresh on us, you would give us steadfast faith. 
in the time of waiting, when we want the door to open, when we want the job to be there, when we want the finance, when we're grieving, when we're feeling that our faith might be failing, empower us through your Holy Spirit to just have that steadfast faith as Elijah did and to call on the name of the one true God again and again as we've sung this morning. Father, I just bring before you the issues in Afghanistan, the troubles that are rising there again. And it seems like a very black and dark situation. But you are the same, one true God. Bring light into that nation. Let there be people there, Lord, that can speak out your word, your name, your truth. Let there be hope where there seems to be no hope. Father, I pray as well for all the school pupils, Lord, on holiday now. They've had a very turbulent time. This is now their holiday and it's feeling strange for a lot of them because they've spent more time at home than they have in school. For some, home is not the safest place or the best place. So I just pray your protection on all school pupils, Lord. We've seen two tragic stories in the news this week of two very young children who've lost their lives. And it appears that the people involved are the people that care for them. Lord, we just lift that situation up and on the impact on the communities that those two young children come from, the wider family. the play schools and nurseries and schools that they went to, all will be impacted by that. So we just lift them up and ask that you pour your healing into those communities. You pour your peace. The peace that passes understanding And Father, we just pray for governments around the world. Some countries seem to be having to go back into lockdowns and restrictions. And others are f virtually fully free. Sometimes it seems to be changing on a daily basis. Help us, Lord, to keep our gaze on you. You are the faithful one. So unchanging. Our rock of peace. Help us not to get caught up and distracted and disturbed by ever-changing headlines and restrictions. But Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, pour your wisdom into the decision makers. That the decisions they make are for the best interests of the people that they serve in their government roles. And Father, we just bring ourselves to you this morning. We just thank you for the miracle that you've done in Andrea's life. We celebrate and rejoice with her. But we also bring ourselves when we're still in that time where we're not feeling the answers coming through. We're not feeling like we're hearing your voice. Just speaking to each and every situation represented here, represented for the people watching online, you know their needs, Lord. Minister through your falling, fresh, anointing Holy Spirit as each one has need. That they find their hope restored, their peace returning
Lord, we thank you that we can bring our prayers to you this morning. We thank you that we know that your word says that in heaven are golden bowls full of the prayers of the saints. Every prayer we pray, Lord, is heard, is in the throne room of heaven. So, Father God, we just commit ourselves to you. We put our trust in you. We give thanks to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we, we carry on uh, with our service this morning, I would like to share something with you. It's um, giving thanks again, added on to Celia's prayers when she was praying for the, the school children and those on holidays. Um, I, as, as well as thousands of other healthcare professionals, are part of the vaccination programme. And it was so beautiful yesterday to see hundreds of 16-year-olds coming in for the walk-in for their vaccine. The uptake for the young children has been tremendous in the area I was working. I just want to you know, thank God for reaching into the hearts of the young people. They do want to be free, like we all want to be free. And it was just beautiful to see, and I just wanted to share that. So thanks, God, for reaching the hearts of our youngsters. Thank you. So we're coming to the piece now. Now, this is when kids, you need to help us out here, okay? We're not now doing the handshakey bit that we normally used to be doing in the service, okay? We're not doing that. So instead, now what we're doing is we're doing a big wave. Now, some of us, I think, feel a little bit awkward about this big wave. Could you just show us what a big wave actually looks like? Ne that's it now a little bit bigger can we see a big wave over here can you there we go there we go this is it this that's it all, all very refined over here a bit like having the queen with us so there we go so that's it we're going to share the peace with one another the peace of God so I want everyone to do their biggest waves today okay God has called us to live in peace the peace and love of the Lord be always with you Let's give one another an enormous wave, an enormous wave, an enormous regal wave of peace. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you at home. <laughs>
The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy. At all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great High Priest who has loosed us from our sins and has made us to be a royal priesthood to you, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, our heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. We will say that together. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you, through him, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, granted by the, his merits and death, and through faith in his blood. We and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences, and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen.
God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so we come to the end of our service together this morning. We close with this, the final blessing. May the eyes of the creator behold us. May the hands of the Saviour uphold us. May the arms of the Spirit enfold us, now and forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our final worship song.